What's going on in the internet? It's Selfish here with Retrospect. Today we're going to take a look at the Trim UI Brick, which by name is going to become a meme if it doesn't perform well. Let's take a look. All right, let's see what we got going on here. So we got a pretty nice box, actually. Trim UI does a pretty good job of their packaging, other than maybe the original Trim UI Mini, which looked like the box could have been picked up at a truck stop. But here we do have our model number, which is the TG3040. I've been waiting for almost two years for this handheld to come out. So it's pretty crazy that, it, that it's out now. Obviously, we have the white color here. And uh, on the back here, we have uh, some stuff that's really not in English. RGB is in English. Roy G. Biv. I'm guessing that says RGB lights because they're all over this thing. It does have a 3000 milliamp battery, but we'll get more into that when we go through the specs of the handheld. Take her out of the box here, get rid of our instruction manual. No, I'm just kidding. We do have another origami accordion. So that's pretty sweet, making some tunes. Oh yeah. Sounds more like clapping than accordion noise. You know what, clapping is nicer than the original accordion noise sometimes. I'll take it. We do have our handheld right here. We do have a type C power cable. And some extra buttons for the back. On the back of this, you can actually swap out the buttons. Very, very easy to do. So we'll take a look at that as well. Um, I do have a black one coming too that'll have even more buttons. And you can actually, there's more parts than just the buttons you can swap out. But the buttons are the one thing that uh, that comes with them. But I think I'm going to get a plethora of buttons with the other one. And then some other swappable parts. We'll take a look at that when that shows up. Here we have our Trim UI brick. I have a hard time not calling this the Smart Pro just because the TSP has been one of my favorite handhelds literally for the last year. And it just, I've grown with it through all the different firmwares and stuff. If you are on this channel, you know that I've done a bunch of videos on it. And so this is the mini version kind of. They do feel the same, like the same materials they're made out of. I feel like this might get dirtier though. It's a little bit softer maybe. I don't know, it's about the same. Interestingly enough too, I'm pretty sure they have the same D-pad. So if you like the D-pad on the Trim UI Smart Pro, the brick, I believe is the same D-pad. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. You know what, it sits up a little bit higher though. So a little different membrane underneath there, but I think the, the D-pad itself is the same. This doesn't have joysticks though, which would have been kind of cool, but they did stick with their two speakers on the front like they did over here, even though I'm pretty sure this is one speaker in the back that fires at the back of the handheld, but you know, whatever. Since we have it out of the package, let's go through the IO real quick. We'll start right up here on the top. We do have an LED light strip here. And on the back here, we do have our shoulder buttons. Very, very short travel, not real loud. And we do have this metal plate right here. That's one of the things I think I'm gonna swap out on my other one. That is a part that you can actually get for these. On the left-hand side here, we do have our volume buttons. On the right-hand side, we do have that crazy function button that was also found in the TSP that nobody knew what it did. Uh, now we kind of have a good idea what it does, and then we do have our power button right there. Oh, and one thing I did miss on the back, and I apologize, is there is a Type-C hole right here. This is gonna be your OTG hole for things like a memory stick, controllers, stuff like that. This is not a charging port. You actually cannot charge through that. All right, back to the bottom here. We do have our SD hole. We do have a little RR button, a little reset button right here. Our type C hole for charging, our microphone, and then also we do have our 3.5 jack for listening to them tunes. On the front here, we do have a 3.2 inch display and we'll talk more about that here in a minute. We do have a menu button, start and select. And what's gonna throw me off is I feel like these should be start and select. These are additional function buttons. This is F1, F2, and the F slider. So these are all function buttons that can do different things. For having your D-pad act like an analog joystick, you can also use it for dimming the LCD on here. You can have it change the colors of the LCD. You can do, you can set up turbo buttons. You can kind of do all kinds of things with these. You can do CPU overclocking like you could on the original Trim UI Smart Pro. So this does have the same SOC in it as the Trim UI Smart Pro as well now we did talk a little bit about this d-pad here uh right off the bat but uh it does have a decent travel it seems like they lifted it up a little bit but the the pad itself is pretty much the same size i'm not sure if the pad is thicker or if it's just lifted a little bit with a little bit different membrane also mine's very broken i have this is a pre-release one so it's very broken uh, i should probably should have grabbed my other one to take a look at that and then we do have our abxy buttons uh they they sit they don't really really short travel but they they feel fine they feel like they're gonna work just fine uh short travel is good if it if it rebounds good and right now it's rebounding great so one other thing that trim ui is really good about or maybe obnoxious about is putting their name all over their handhelds as you can see it says trim ui brick there that's their logo there their menu button is always their logo over here they have their name nope not over there here in this etching back here is actually their logo. It says Trim UI Brick right there. Uh, just something that they're kind of known for is just completely graffitiing their handhelds with their name. And somehow they make it look good because you it's not like this big blaring thing that's going on. 
it's everywhere, but yet it still looks nice. And maybe it's just because it's a nice looking logo. I don't know. Just a couple years ago, handheld manufacturers were putting their names on the screen and it looked like absolute dog turds. And they finally stopped doing that. But at least the, the nicer ones stopped doing that. We'll get this screen cover off. Maybe. If I can get... If I can get to this little tab down here. Oh my goodness. What is going on here? That is... Oh, we already got a we already got a mark on this one. This is a bat, not not mark on the device, but we already got something against it. It's it's got a bad spot for that tab. All right, let's listen. Ooh, that was the most satisfying one of those things I think I've pulled off in at least a couple of months. Ooh, and that screen looks even better now. Uh, if you don't know, this is the same screen. We just did a review on the RGB 20 Pro right here. Oddly, even though that this is such a bigger device and everything, and this has this huge bezel on the bottom, they're the same screen. So these are the same screen in both of these devices. And while we're talking about that, let's go through the specs real quick, and we'll talk about what screen is actually in here as part of that. So it is a 3.2 inch, 1024 by 768 IPS display. That makes it a 4.3 display. This does have an all winner A133P CPU. It's at 1.8 gigahertz. It's actually, you can overclock them to two. Exact same SOC that's in the Trim UI Smart Pro, just in a much smaller package. It still has that same GPU. The Imagination Power VR GE 8300 at 660 megahertz. It does have one gigabyte of LPDDR3 RAM. 8 gigs of EEMC onboard storage. Does have that micro SD card slot that we talked about here on the bottom, and then that USB drive support, which would be right up here through the top. Does rock Wi Fi, and it does have Bluetooth 2.1. So that's pretty freaking awesome. So let's power this thing up, take a look at it. This is just gonna be a quick video today. I carried it around for a couple of hours today, but I didn't realize I had to set up a memory card for it separate from what I had going on. So um, I didn't get a lot of playtime. I did get some after I got the memory card figured out. And actually, maybe that's the first thing we will talk about. Down on my thingamabob, you will find a link to TrimUI's GitHub. If you need to set up a memory card for this, if you are like me and you order without memory cards most of the time, you're going to need to set it up. And when you format it on here, it doesn't actually set it up for you because I formatted it through the device and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. But if you go to their GitHub and you click on the brick, it'll actually bring you to a repository with a download that is just the SD card image. Drop it over there that has your emulators and everything on it. So just a word to the wise. And all you really do is you open the zip file and drop and drag. So make sure your memory card's formatted and then just drop and drag it. This is probably the easiest one to do. Once you do that, all the folders will be in there for you to just drop your games into the specific game folders. This will have Crossmix OS on it any day now. Possibly if you were to order it right now, it probably would be on there before you get it. MinUI has already launched for this. So there is a custom firmware option already out of the gate for you. But what I did is I took some of the games I have off my Trim UI Smart Pro and put them on here just for the fact that I just wanted to do some demonstrations. I'll walk you through this real quick, but it's going to be quick because again, this is just going to be a first look video. If you hit the menu button, you can do a search or a ROM refresh. You can also get a search by hitting the select button normally. There you go. That is an option. You can get it around the top menus. So all your menus are on the top by using L1 and R1. So you have your games menu and this will pack all your games. Go back up to the top if you have ports on here and port center will be part of Crossmix OS. So might just want to wait to port some stuff on here until you have Crossmix on here or whatever OS you decide to go with. I just know that if you go with something like MinUI, you're actually limiting yourself to the systems that you can do on here because they don't really go into the 3D systems. So you would be completely limited. This should perform about the same as the 3566. Again, they do overclock these usually to two gigahertz, which actually negatively has affected the performance, at least on the Trim UI Smart Pro, where it starts to thermal throttle. And you'll notice when you're playing games for hours at a, on end, it'll start to slow down and that's because it's thermal throttling. So hopefully they fix that problem here. These are obviously aren't active cooled, but it would be a kind of a cool thing. Oh, you know what I forgot to talk about when we went through the device? It has two front firing speakers and they're pretty loud. They're right at your face. This is the best place to have speakers is on the front of a handheld. I think we know that we've discussed that before. So nice to have those there. Sorry, ADHD just kicked in. All right, so here, if you're in the apps portion, you have the ability to change this function key. And like I said, these are also function keys. So as you see, you have F key single run. So that's this one right here. Then you have F key two, that's that one, and F key one, which is that one. And so I just have, I've set up, so this, if I hit this button, then this tr becomes a joystick. So if you want to play your Dreamcast N64, you're, it becomes a joystick. And I, I put it on this one right here because it's literally right there. So if I need to switch back and use the arrow keys, this is probably the most user-friendly version 
of doing this. It's not like on some of the older Ambernix where you had to hit hit the power button once and then switch. This button's a completely separate button and it's sitting right here. So it's really nice to have that there. You can change your LCD brightness. So like this here, I've got set up for that. And then also you can do overclocking through there. So you can do a, a CPU clock switcher as well as a performance mode, which is what I have set up on here. On my Smart Pro, when I hit performance mode, the LEDs turn off. So maybe I should set that up too. I'm not sure what I'll do there. You also have the option for a quiet mode, stuff like that. And you can put that on any of these buttons. So if you're next to your significant other and just want it to be quiet, set it the function to a button. You don't have to go in and change any volume or hit buttons up and down. It'll just do it for you. And then you do have a plethora of turbo options that you can preset on here. Pretty much every button on here can become a turbo button, or more than half of them anyways. Some other things you have, Moonlight Game Streaming. I don't know how much you're going to want to do that, uh, but you technically could run Steam on your PC and stream it through here if you wanted to. Maybe I'll do that in the next video. You have a media player, that way you can watch your own videos and also get audio. I got nothing on there right now. You have your SD card formatter. Like I said, this will not set it up for your SD card to be used on here. If you do put a USB storage device in the top here, you just go to USB storage, it'll pull everything up there and your file manager, obviously is a file manager. You're not gonna have Portmaster on yours. I dragged an app folder over from one of my Trimu iSmart Pros before I did the, the SD card thing, trying to figure out why things weren't working. And that's how I ended up with this Portmaster folder here. But as you can see, it's not really doing anything because this device doesn't have Portmaster until you get an OS that has it. Uh, Newly is pretty much ready for this as well. That will have Portmaster on it. So if you don't want to do cross mix, you can do Newly. But I'll be honest, cross mix for the Trim UI devices has been like Onion was for the Mio Mini devices. So I would I would check it out. Then you have access to your Retro Arc here as well. Going back up to the top, we also have Net Play options. So if you want to play, they play well together too. Uh, so you could play with this and this if you wanted to. So you could go brick and smart pro, or you could go two bricks. You can also daisy chain two bricks together with this USB port. If you wanted to do some Pokemon swap in or some, some of the old GBA stuff, you can actually just hook up a C to C cable. That's the theory anyways. I don't think I've seen anybody do it yet, but in theory, you'll be able to do that. And then you just have your normal menu here, which is going to give you display brightness, stuff like that. Uh, you can change the themes. Right now, the themes are just different colors. So, like, I've got this green around here, this energy, I guess they call it. You can make it green if you wanted to, or whatever color. So, that's the green. Or uh, you could do cyber, which is spelled incorrectly, I think. I don't know. But this one at least looks like it's snowing, which is kind of neat. I just like how bright this is, just because this is kind of one of those devices that seems like it needs and wants to be bright. Um, and then you do have key mapping and then your set it, your settings normal stuff power off stuff like that this will power off if you hold the power button for about two seconds it'll pop up with a power off mode similar to like what an android device would do so you'd have that option as well and here you can refresh your roms change your time and date uh, stuff like that so pretty awesome and then obviously your device info so this is going to start at 1.05 uh, that's the original version these are launching with for software and you can check that out on their github it does keep up keep track of that so uh, right now, the firmware for this isn't available on Trimui's website, but it is on GitHub. So if you need it, it's there. And again, that link down on my thing, Bob. A couple other things I figured I'd show you here quick. Uh, the button swapping is really easy. So you saw it came with extra buttons. This kind of concerns me that these might fall off and kind of is like, nah, they'll be fine. They really just pop right off. So if you need to swap out your buttons, you can just pop them off and you want you can change the colors or whatever you can also change all these led colors and things like that i believe i have some clear buttons coming if i remember correctly if i do maybe we'll try those on here uh, or we'll try them on the black one whichever but just to check and see how the light looks through them because i'm kind of interested to see what the light will look like going through some clear buttons and interestingly enough they're not matching colors right now normally they're matching so they're all kind of changing colors on their own pretty cool all right so i will play a couple of games here for you real quick like i said just gonna be a quick video today and we'll wrap it up I'm just going to try to hit, a, you know, 20 seconds of a couple of different systems for you. That way you can kind of get a feel for what it can and can't do. This will play GameCube. It will play N64, stuff like that. Now, it does take some tweaking in some of them. I don't know how Newly is going to do it because I didn't use Newly on the Trim UI Smart Pro. But for maybe like a, a day, just because I was trying to test it out. It was before it was ready to go. But CrossMix actually had everything already optimized for all your different games. At least the systems were. And you could do minimal tweaking, but it, they, everything played really well. And then again, don't forget, you do have this function key here. If stuff is underperforming, you can clock up the performance on here. All right, let's show you a couple of games here real quick on this beautiful little device. God, it just looks cool. And then I'll kind of tell you what I think of it so far. Like I said, I carried for a couple hours, but I'll, I'll tell you what I think about it uh, at this point.
So that there was just a quick little look at the Trim UI brick. And it is really just a fantastic little handheld. It's very surprisingly comfortable to use. I do have a couple of nitpicks about it. I think the D-pad's gonna be okay. Um, I think that they made it taller. I decided while I was playing here, I think they made it taller because it's also acting as your joystick. That is something that you do need to get used to, not having a joystick. I kind of like the one stick that Ambernick went with. That would have been kind of dope on here. But, you know, these little these little joysticks here, uh, they're not the greatest anyway. So they're not, I mean, they're, they're doable. They work, but, you know, better joysticks are do exist. So, you know, there is that. But all in, I mean, for how small it is, it is comfortable. It also fits in a really kind of good place because if you thought the Miu Mini Plus was too big, but the Miu Mini was too small then you're actually kind of in a good place because it's slightly taller but also narrower than the Mew Mini so pretty much the or Mew Mini Plus uh, so it, 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 and it's thinner so it actually takes up less space and then when you toss it up against another EDC device which is really small and this is really fun I really do like this uh, this G uh, this GDK pixel it's really fun to play but it is a little small uh, especially for your eyes if you have any kind of headache or anything like that but I really kind of think that this fits between these two I know you could argue that it is a little bit taller it's not really I mean it, it is but it's not because it's narrower so size wise I think it is actually a little bit smaller also this is a three and a half inch screen versus a 3.2 so it is a smaller screen as well. I think that the way they made the back and everything, it thins out a little bit better. So it, it just fits in your pocket just, just a little bit better. So I just want to kind of show you where this kind of fit into this whole, you know, this whole scene of these different handhelds. I was trying to make them level as I could, you know, because this could become a thumbnail. You never know. You never know what's going to happen here. So I guess we could have put it up against the Ambernick 35XX Plus as well. So that's where it fits in much, much smaller. The Plus is bigger than the Mi Mini. Same size screen, but obviously bigger much thicker i don't know if you can see that on the poker cam or not but the 355 is much thicker so just a better fit all around it's also relatively light which is nice and so i did have this in my pocket today for a couple hours and i did not feel this in my pocket i kind of forgot it was in there in fact i brought another handheld with me because i wasn't sure if the way i set up the card initially was going to work and it didn't so i assumed correctly so i actually had another handheld in my other pocket which I did notice was in there, and that was my SP. So that was taking up more room than this was, just because this fits a little bit flatter in there. Obviously, it's taller, but it fits flatter in there. So yeah, as long as everything pans out the way that I think it's going to, this is going to be a really hard handheld to beat. Pricing is really good on it. It's very competitive. They wanted to go right after Miu Mini, I think, with the pricing, which is interesting because Miu actually helped Trim UI launched their first handheld, but it seems that they were trying to go right after Mio with their pricing and put it right in the middle of Mio's two most popular handhelds. And arguably in this entire hobby, two of the most popular handhelds. There are a couple things, like I said, I think that this pivots the way that it does because it is used as a joystick as well. So if that's the case, genius. If it's not, well, you got it on accident. Uh, the other thing I'm not a huge fan of is, and I think I can fix this just by loosening this plate a little bit. I think this plate's too tight on the unit that I got. And I don't know if we'll be able to see this on the poker camera or not, probably not. There is a small little ridge right here. So as you can see, I run my fingernail and I think the plate's just too tight. So I'll try loosening that up, but um, hopefully that's the case. And so when you're holding it, because the edges aren't rounded, it's a flat edge. It just feels really sharp in your hands right there. Right where your hand goes in to hit the triggers and the, and the bumper buttons, it just, it's just a kind of, it's kind of a sharp edge. It's not like it hurts or anything. It just feels weird. You wouldn't expect that edge to be there, but then you look at the handheld and you realize how square it is. I mean, just look at how much they cut these bezels in comparison to that Pow Kitty we looked at before. Isn't that crazy? I'm pretty sure this is the exact same screen. They have the same dimensions, same size, same pixels, and Pow Kitty and Trim UI have worked together before. In fact, Pow Kitty is selling this handheld on their official website right now as well. And they did the same thing with the Trim UI Smart Pro. This also was sold on Pow Kitty's website, and a lot of people, including myself, when I initially ordered it, thought it was a Pow Kitty device. Obviously, I figured out that it wasn't after I received it, but this, you know, a lot of people were thinking that this maybe was a Pow Kitty as well, but it's not but I wouldn't put it past them to have group by. But like I said, I wanted to keep this short and I have a lot to learn about this handheld yet, but I don't see how you could go wrong by ordering it. For one, it's not very expensive and it's just a neat little, really clean looking handheld. It's a very premium feeling and looking and operating handheld for very inexpensive. And that I think is a win in anybody's book. That's all I got for today. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share this video with your friends because sharing helps grow the channel. Also, sharing is caring and we care about each other here. That's important. We're trying to build a community. So, you know, sharing is caring. That, that, that'd be helpful. Also, don't be shy about clicking on one of these videos that YouTube put up on the top here for you. It's based off your algorithm. They think you're gonna like it. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.